This is the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time! Presenting the champion of the world, Yo, 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 it's your boy Wham Bam, and today I'm a Blue Angel, and you know what? It's Wham Bam Wednesday, and remember, it's a show about ordinary people who have done extraordinary things, and today, we got one of them people on the show today, and they were Blue Angel. They they graced me with allowing me to wear their helmet, but before I take this helmet off, I need to look you right in the eyes and ask you for a favor, please. I need you to go ahead and subscribe to our channel and make sure you like it and that you share it. Give us a little bit of love, please. That's all we ask because the show is absolutely free and we got great stuff today. We have a hero. God, I feel like a superhero just wearing this helmet. We're talking about a guy that started out as a rescue swimmer. He was a rescue swimmer. He was jumping in the water, in the oceans, and saving lives. Okay? He went from that, and he got promoted. He ended up as a blue angel. Do you know how hard it is to be a blue angel? You're about to find out. Not everybody can do that, but this guy did. After that, he also did so many cool things. This guy worked with some of the greatest music artists, you know, working for like, mm, Tony Danza, uh, Brett Michaels, Little Skid Row, some Cinderella. He, he he was on stage. He's a singer himself. He's got so many cool things, and he's done so many great things, giving back for a lot of communities that we're going to discuss all those things. He's from my hometown, Geneva, New York. That's right. Is coming in today, and guess what? I think he's showing up right now. I think he's coming yeah. in. What's up, AJ? What's up, Sunshine? How you doing, brother? I'm doing awesome. I can't tell you how I feel like a superhero. I love this helmet, this visor. I might take it home, man. I'm, all I'm, I'm, right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know what? In all due respect, I know you earn this helmet. I know how much it means to you because for you to just allow me to put it on my head, I just I just can't say thank you enough because I really do feel like a superhero with this damn blue angel helmet on. Well, you are, man. You are. You <laughs> I am. Are, I am my own way. It's but out of respect, good. I'm going to take it off now. But you know what? First... Tell me, I got you. See, I got you the rescue swimmer helmet as well. Yeah. That's how you all started out. T tell everybody how you got started in, you know, jumping off out of helicopter, saving lives. Well, you know, basically, when I was a little kid, we swam at the American Legion pool every single day. Uh, myself, my brother Mike and Matt, and uh, one day my dad took me, Mike and Matt, to see Top Gun at the cinema downtown in Geneva, and I was wowed when I saw the rescue swimmer scene when the uh, Tomcat spun out and Tom and Goose were in the water and, and they came in to save them and unfortunately Goose had passed, but I was fascinated with the the rescue guy. So you want to be the Top Gun, man. Uh -huh. you, I'm the Top Gun, you know, baby. You, 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 know, know, you, come you, out. you were a good-looking boy back then. Still are, still are, I'm not going to lie, but you, you, had the, you had the glasses and everything. You had the full vibe. Well, I had the hair, too. <laughs> Damn shame, son. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, it was I was completely fascinated with that portion, the helicopter, the guy jumping in the water. I was like, I want to do that when I grow up. Wow. wow. Yeah, man. So, listen, obviously, you're a pretty damn good swimmer. You could say so. Just yeah. like Nemo, keep on swimming, babe. <laughs> keep on swimming. You know? now, now, did you have to go through any tests with that? Did you have to, like, hold your breath for a certain amount of time? Oh, you had to do a lot of things. Oh, I mean, man, tell us about that. Well, you know, it, you know, I grew up swimming, uh, but the, actually, I'll be honest with you. I'm going to be honest about everything. I I'm want you to be honest. Don't, don't be lying you to know, me, man. You know, people do things. They want the shiny product. Well, I am everything but shiny. I told you, folks, you're in for a treat today. Hard knocks, baby. <laughs> Hard knocks. Nothing comes easy. Ooh, it don't come easy. <laughs> yeah, nothing came easy. So basically, the first day I was in the program, I was like, you got to be kidding me. I, like, hyperventilated. It was no joke. Yeah. Well, as you're in the program, tell me about some of the testing. Tell me about some of the tests that they did. Well, well you, you know, you go in, you go in. It, it, it was just like they they just roar. They roar at you. And so psychologically, you have to be compartmentalized. And I was not. I was like, whoa, whoa, you know. So I, I panicked a little bit. But after I settled in, you know, every day, I mean, you were up, at, you were up, boom, at the, you know, with the sun. And it, it was just the, the training was intense. The How many people the, were you training with? How many, I mean, were you in a class, a group well, of people? Well, you started out with several, several people, but you didn't 
didn't end up with many in the end. All right. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is. But but the testing, I mean, from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, it was nonstop. Physical readiness, you know, uh, into the pool, calisthenics, running. I mean, you, it's hot down in Pensacola. And mm. we did not do things in black flag conditions but we did things that were very difficult i'll just put it that way right right you know but it was a lot more than just push-ups and sit-ups and swimming all kinds of survival techniques things of that nature how long can you hold your breath though i really uh, want to know back then i could hold my breath for well over two minutes yeah okay yeah now all about a minute i can still go up and back you know i'm i'm not as pretty as i was i'm like a happy little hippopotamus but <laughs> i can still get to and fro all right now, talk a little bit about, I know you've seen some action, so you saw some people out there in the water that you guys had to rescue and save. I have. What, what, was, what was the very first time, the first time you got called, wow. taking you all the way back? Well, the what very like? first time I got called, unfortunately, it was, a, uh, it was a crash, and there was an aircraft that crashed 10,000 feet in a four foot of water. Well, we didn't know that. So we're in the office, just like when you see the old TV shows from the firefighters come down the pole, the alert went off and we're like, Rawr. Mm. and I was like, oh my God, I'm the rescue swimmer on duty today. You know, so I'm like, wow, this is not routine. This is the real deal. So the, the alarm goes off. We run out to the flight line. I'm throwing off my gear, putting on my rescue swimmer gear. And in my mind, it was like Pantera, man. All I could hear was was like a new level or walk. I mean, these songs, it were just, it was like bright colors in my mind. And I, and, and then we get in the aircraft and, and that's all, it's like it just color, power, the, the adrenaline, Pantera in my mind. And then we get over the scene and you could tell it wasn't rescue, it was recovery. Uh -huh. uh, but it was, it was, it was fast. So, you, so your fir the first time you had jumped, it was recovery. So you it was recovery. There was no, nobody survived at all that day. No. And I will tell you right now, there is nothing more humbling than swimming through another man's flesh. Uh -huh. And uh, I did that. And that's what that, you know, when people, when I meet people, especially being involved in the, some of the things I've been in and I realize, you know, some people, some people get lucky. Some people are fortunate. You know what I mean? I am humble. So when I come across people that don't know any better, I try to have grace with them and not get mad because I know things that they don't know. Because mm. I come across a lot of people in some of these things that I do, and I'm like, who the fungal are you? Yeah. Oh, can I say that? Sorry yeah, no, that. you're good. You're you good. Know, you, been... but, but I realize they don't know. They haven't seen some of the things, so I have grace with them. And I, wow. I try not to get overly emotional with that. They just don't know. So so at the end of the day, I don't even know really where I was going with this because the emotion. So basically, you well, get dude, hold on, on scene. Hold, hold, hold on. Let me, let me stop you there because it's got to be emotional for you. I mean, yeah. to think that your first actual job when you got the call mm -hmm. was like, okay, all the training now starts coming to your head. There's oh, yeah. No, there's no more training. Oh, yeah. It's go time. It's, it's, it's go, go time. time. I mean, and you're excited about going out there and saving somebody. Yeah. And they'd be yeah. able to, to go out there and not be able to do that. Yeah. I mean, so we're running out to the flight line. I'm like, you know, and I'm like, Raw. so we get up there, we get over scene. I'm like, whoa. And then it's like, oh, my God, th this is insane. <laughs> and then. The training did come in, and I became like RoboCop. Totally cool, totally compartmentalized, not afraid, not afraid of nothing. But when they lowered me down, they, I couldn't jump because there was so much uh, wreckage, composite material, uh, all kinds, you know, gas. You know what? I, never, I never really thought about that, taking that into consideration, mm -hmm. that you can't just openly jump because there's particles and there's stuff. Oh, yeah. You could actually jump into something and actually get hurt yourself. Oh, yeah. And, and speaking of particles, I mean, this might be a little heavy, but I'm going to, like I said, no. I'm going to tell the truth today. And so they lowered me down. And like I said, there's nothing more humbling than swimming through another man's flesh. But you're down there. And as I'm sifting through things and I could... I realized, oh my God, my feet can touch. It was only like four foot of water. Oh wow! So I took my flippers off, and I was like, "This is this is crazy. What am I going to step on?" But in my mind, you know, of course, I was concerned about it. But that airplane, ten thousand feet in a four foot of water, you know, it's psh, oh, that's no good. You know, so it was pretty wild. But but you know, when you're a little kid and you're carving out a pumpkin at Halloween, I I looked like Spider Man, but it wasn't a web design on my super suit you I know what i'm you. saying no i got you totally so yeah. that that much but did did it ever did you ever kind of stop and say i don't want to do this 
I mean, did it ever get, or was it, you know, oh. this is why I do this. I'm an American yeah. fighting man. That's what I signed up for. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't sign up to get weak. I got signed up. I signed up to get stronger. Yeah. I signed up to be, you know, the kind of person that I feel every American should be somebody who earns their keep somebody who works for everything they get. And right. that's why I did what I did. How many people they have with you? How many people are in a helicopter when you guys go out there to rescue? Well, typically you have two pilots. Um, you have two pilots and then you have a, a hospital corpsman who performs, you know, a lot of the emergency procedures on an individual, you know, with life-saving technique that starts with the rescue swimmer who goes down in the water and retrieves them. But then the corpsman uh, will work on them and you also have a crew chief. So basically the two pilots, the hospital corpsman, the crew chief who jumps the swimmer, hoists the swimmer and will assist the corpsman um, during the evolution. Yeah, Man. that's um, so that's, that, that's how, how many how many times? I mean, obviously you, you did this quite a bit. How, yeah. how many years were you actually doing this? I did the rescue swimmer uh, portion, naval air crewman portion, almost eight years. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, did you ever actually have to physically jump out of the helicopter into the water? Oh yeah. Like, okay. So oh yeah. Oh how, how yeah. High? How high were you up? Well, we advertised ten and ten, ten feet, ten knots, or fifteen and zero. But if the good Lord decides to open up the sea, man, yeah, I fall in a hell of a lot farther than that, 40, 50 feet at times, bruised up, beat up, busted jaw. I was going to ask you that. But no, you can die at 20 if you fall wrong. Oh, man. That's yeah, got to be a little, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's got to be tough in itself. Did it, you ever get yeah. banged up with that? Uh, that's an understatement. I got spinal con compression the whole nine yards. Let me tell you, man, I've had 16 concussions. You talk about these guys, everybody, look, I love sports. I love athletes. I mean, just like everybody else. Yeah. But I did what I did for less than minimum wage. My my wife and my little babies and me, we were on government milk and cheese, man. But I do it all again. Every bruise, every bump, every break I took, I do it all again because that's what American fighting man does. That's right. Well, number one, thank you for that. Thank uh, you. For I you. mean, I, I appreciate your service and and what you've done, and and that's why we're here today because I, I'm amazed. I mean, I'm amazed at how much you've seen, how much you've gone through, and how you continue to do certain things. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But um, you know, I, I do want to finish up a little bit more with the with the rescue swimming because yeah. I know that was uh, you know the, the first time that you jumped in actually saved somebody. Did you ever save anybody? Oh yeah. Okay. What was that? What was that feeling like? Can you tell me? You walk. You remember that day? You know, it's indescribable, man. The power. It's just like I said when I went out on the because you don't know what you're going to face. So that first day, it was a recovery. But um, the when I actually had a rescue, I remember we were going out. We were marking on top over the spot. It was actually a, a fisherman that was doing illegal fishing, mm. <laughs> and he got stung by a scorpion fish. So he was going into anaphylactic shock. Wow. And this was a big cat, man. He was bigger than me. So we're we're going over the 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 little boat that they were on but the rotor wash from the helicopter was rocking it to the point where it could capsize it so they jumped me and you know the guys on the ship his buddy is like freaking out this big old helicopter and this dude dressed in black shows up mm -hmm. you know and he's like oh my god what's going on i'm like turn the engine off and there was no ladder i i had to wait for the boat to rock enough so i could heave myself in because that it was that high it was that high to try to crawl over and then i'm calling for the the i really can't get into that but but sorry about that that's but uh that's well, but i got the guy in the water i got the guy in the water and um we went to hoist him up the hoist could only hold like 600 pounds now i was 250 solid pounds i was like leonitis i know back then. you're like 210 now right oh yeah yeah, yeah. i'm a little more reuben-esque these days <laughs> yeah, yeah. a happy hippopotamus you know <laughs> but but back then i was you know almost 250 but this guy was a big big boy and basically we started going up and when you know the when we were going up i had my legs wrapped around him because i had him hooked to the rescue strap on my gated d-ring which is on my my harness and he almost ripped my friggin <laughs> hips out of socket wow. so i had to release my legs and just hold him steady but the wench kept slipping because he was really big and I wasn't too small. And I remember we landed on Sacred Heart Hospital on this helo pad. Well, I'm not, no, was it Sacred Heart or Baptist Hospital? I'm not sure, we were in Pensacola. Right. But we landed on the top of the building, man, and it was really, really heavy. And the people come out, the EMTs, you know, and the orderlies came out and got this guy. And what we had found out, the doctors had said, another five minutes and that guy was dunsies, man. You said, you said his life. 
well, we all did. It's a group effort. The sure. pilots did, the corpsmen did, the crew chief it. did, and sure, I, I guess it. I had something to do with it. Does uh, do, you, do you know this guy? Does he stay in contact with you at all? Nah, man. No, no, that was it. Nah, that guy was out of it. Yeah. You know, I was just a guy that came out of nowhere. I mean, myself, I got I to gotta admit, I think it's if somebody jumped in the water and saved my life, I kind of want to get to know the guy and, and give him some gratitude. So, you know, a very thankless job at times then. Well, everything is. Everybody does what they do. And, you know, in their own way, they do something special. It doesn't matter what it is. It really doesn't matter what it is. You know, it's just like music. I know I was that little boy that I didn't have a money sometimes for a ticket but one time somebody was really really nice to me and i know what it's like to be on both sides of the rope it was the same way in the military mm -hmm. i had some mentors that were amazing to me and uh, one of them his name was brian welcher i mean we even got in a fist fight and everything he's like a dad to me we drew blood on each other but mm -hmm. i love him <laughs> he was tough on me he taught me a lot and when everybody just thought i was way too much of a wildcat this guy loved me, and he protected me, yeah. not only from others, but from myself. Yeah. Yeah. So what was, a, was you know, as, as a rescue swimmer, what was your biggest moment that you remember? Like, what was one of the, your favorite moments? Completing the process, because so few people have the opportunity. And, and being somebody who was, you know, I was a great athlete, and I was intelligent in my own way, but, you know, I had dyslexia and speech impediments, and, you know, I had learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. And when you go from a little kid with learning disabilities to a guy who, who saves people's lives or is in charge of a $35 million jet, mm -hmm. president of your class, captain of the team, but you couldn't even tell time. That's crazy. I couldn't even tell time. Really? I just knew when this hand was on that hand, I said the Pledge of Allegiance when I was the president of my class. Hmm. You know, you found a way, though. I found a way. That's what you, you do. You, you adapt you, and overcome. That's yeah. what life is all about, adapting and overcoming. Now, did that affect you going through? Because I know you did a ton of schooling there with, uh, you know, to, to be able to be a sw swimming rescue. And, you know, obviously later on into the Blue Angels, I know there was a lot of school. Well, sure, that. sure. It, 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 how did, you how know, did that, in, you know, impede that? Well, basically, we all have our own fears and obstacles in life, and it's the way you adapt and overcome. Uh, and, and basically from an, a young age, I was, you know, I was scared because when people may have thought, wow, what he did was cool, what he did was special, to me, I was still... A, I was a nothing. Mm -hmm. I was a nobody. And that's the way I think I stayed humble. So from an early age, before Rescue Swimmer, before Blue Angels, before, before anything else, I realized, which a lot of people don't realize, and they should, at the end of the day, it's like Cinderella. The carriage will turn back into the pumpkin. So you got to stay humble. You have to stay humble. No yeah. matter what comes at you, there's one thing to be lucky and get things to come at you. It's another thing to be fortunate because you worked hard for everything. Right. I work hard for everything. Even working hard doesn't guarantee you nothing because no. people can take advantage of you. They're going to. I'm like a, a Clydesdale, a horse. Yeah. Plenty has been taken. But you know what? I'm rich in flesh. I got a beautiful family, beautiful friends. I'm a happy guy. That's awesome. That's awesome. So let's talk about the transition into Blue Angels. Yes. How the heck did that happen? Like, what, what, what was it in your life? Obviously, I, I mean, I know you did a lot of wonderful things, but that's an elite group. You know, what was it like getting that call to say, hey, AJ, we want to, you know, give you an opportunity to become a Blue Angel? Well, it all is. B being a member of the United States military in general, you're elite, period. That's the way I look at it. But as a rescue swimmer, to me, that was the, the highest of highs. You know, you know, you are part of special operations, and, and it, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience to even be involved in that. To be a Blue Angel was something to prove to myself. And basically how that happened was I, I had made rank. I went to a leadership school. Of course, I'm like the artful dodger, very animated, the bald David Lee. Not Ron, you. Not whatever you, you want to call it. <laughs> so these people at NAV lead school is like, wow, this cat is out there. And I met these Blue Angel guys. I'm like, I can't be one of them. These guys are like, you know, wow. Because like I said, it's in my going. mind, I never... No matter what I did, what seemed amazing and powerful to somebody else, amazing and powerful to somebody else, to me, I was just, I was just me. So, so basically, I'm like, wow, this is amazing. They're guys, these guys are like, man, I got picked as the honor guy. You know, everybody picked the, the lead of the, the honor guy, whatever. I got picked, whatever you want to call it. So they're like, you got to come with us, man. You got to apply for the team. And I'm like, man, 
I can't do, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not, they're like, man, they can teach you to be a crew chief. You'd be amazing. You'd be out in front of the crowd there. We know when they turn that, that little button on, you're going to be like, woo. <laughs> and I was, and some people loved me for it. A lot of people hated me for it. So, Again, the original question, AJ, you go off base. I get shy. You I get, get shy. Good. Come on. A blue angel. How did you become a blue angel? Okay. Like not okay. the process. Like what was it? Like that call. Like what the moment where it's like, hey, we want you. Okay. okay. You're worthy. All right. I'll be I know honest. you're humble, but you're worthy. I get shy because okay. I don't like to talk about myself like this. I it, feel like a jamo. But, but dude, the reality is you've done. And there's so many people out there in the world that would love to be a Blue Angel. They don't know how. They okay. don't know if they even have a chance. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean, think about it. You were a kid that was uneducated, but educated, meaning you educated yourself in many ways, overcoming dyslexia, overcoming some of your challenges. Well, I have lots of great teachers, a lot of great teachers, a lot of very, very, very patient teachers. Well, I was just a wildcat. I just I, needed I special that's help. You mm -hmm. definitely got to surround yourself mm -hmm. with the right people, obviously. Yes. But you mm -hmm. knew the right people. You found the people to help you achieve the goals that you wanted. That's true. Did I you did. ever say you wanted to be a Blue Angel? Or is this just something that happened? Well, I was at leadership school. I met these guys. They're like, you should be one of us. I'm like, there's no way. But I went. I applied. People dug me. And, and so uh, hold on. Stop right there real quick. Because I want to add. You said... Meeting them saying, you should be one of us. Mm -hmm. So they recognized you yeah. as being somebody inferior to others, to, to, to having what it takes, right? Sure. So at that point and stuff, being one of us, what did that mean? Well, I felt inferior. I felt that I couldn't do that just like I didn't feel I could do any of the other things I did. But they saw something, you know, and, and basically, so I applied. I, I was going through the emotions. I, not the emotions, but the, the motions because I thought, eh. You know, I'll do it be to appease these guys. And then all these people were really into me, really dug me. And then I got a little cocky. So this is what happened. I went into the, it's like Caesar. You so know? hold on. So you apply. Does that mean anybody can apply? Well, n not necessarily. Yes and no. Okay. At that time, there weren't, there was many more restrictions like now because they don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, you know, military world, this country, like we can't hurt anybody's feeling back then, man, you had to look the part, you had to be the part, you had the brains, the body, you had to have it all. You had to write an essay, you had to go around and meet everybody in every shop. And then at the end, you know, it was like Caesar. Yeah. And I got this. Now, I came in after they had already pretty much picked the team for the year. It was like October. How, and, how uh, many make it? What's that? How many do they pick? How, how many make it? Oh, it just depends on what they need for that year. Now, there's a rotation of pilots because you said you want to get right to the punch with some of this stuff, and it's it's drawn out. Okay, but, you know, at that time, you know, people in general for each shop, whether you're avionics, you know, engines, you know, uh, parachute rigger, you know, all these different jobs, even the corpsmen's, everybody. Um, there's a lot more than just the guy that's There's so flying. many people. Oh, my God, man. There's a t It's like NASCAR wow. on steroids, the yeah. Blue Angels. Yeah. You know, but but – so, so, you know, so the Caesar thing, they pick you, you know, and, and you go in and it's like, wow, next thing you know, you see these uniforms with your name on it, but you still got to prove yourself because you have to earn the crest. It, it wasn't easy. Oh, nothing wow. was easy. Nothing was easy there. Um, it, it, like I said, you know, you had to have the brains, you had to have the body, you had to be poster quality. Mm. period what's the best of the best oh man back then if you had a tattoo you had to burn it off if, if it could be seen now really people can be what they are really but, dude it yeah. was hardcore it was hardcore and then there were a lot of things that go into it that you know i should keep you know under that kind of fraternity of you know but sure. but you know anybody who wants to be and you and you become it now i will say this when I went to visit my new friends before I was taking it seriously, I saw, you know, everybody knows the song Dreams by Van Halen, right? Well, this is what motivated me, mm. okay? <laughs> the Blue Angels had a quadruple platinum record of 5150, the Van Halen album, you know, with the guy, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. And, and I saw that in the hallway. I'm like, I got to be a Blue Angel. Van Halen is in the <laughs> house. I need to be here. So something that simple for my sweet little mind, which is so colorful. I saw that, that I saw that platinum record on the wall from Van Halen. I got my dreams, baby. And that's what I did. So I applied. I did everything I was supposed to. Well, the last person I had to talk to was this 
was maintenance master chief. And this guy was picture perfect, you know, perfect hair, everything. And he goes, why would you want to do this? You have gold wings. You have all these things and blah, 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 blah. Why would you want to do this? You have a big bonus coming up because I turned down a ton of money, um, you know, and there were, I got a lot of flack from it, you know. But when I was a little boy with those speech impediments and those learning disabilities, wow, I, I have a, ch a chance at being a Blue Angel. Wow, I had a chance of being a rescue swimmer. Wow. Mm -hmm. But this is another challenge. I got through that challenge. And I got to rescue people. I got to recover people. There are people that are rescue swimmers. It'll do 20, 30 years. They may not have got one shot. I had more than enough. I had more than my share. Mm -hmm. So back to talking to the maintenance master chief. We're sitting there at the desk. And I said to him, you know what, master chief? He goes, why should we bring you in? Why should we take you? And I said, hey, sir, at the end of the day, he goes, I'm not a sir. I'm a master chief. I said, master chief, you can see me now or you can see me later but you're going to see me. He goes, all right, Mr. Frado, we're done. So were you I, ever afraid they weren't going to accept you? Well, this is it. So I, I'm like, yeah, I got this. I got this. I walk out and I had a night flight that night. So you don't fly over the blue angels hangar. You don't fly over those airplanes. And I had convinced my commanding officer. I said, look, I just had my interview. Can we just kind of scooch the aircraft over the field? And they're like, well, we're not really supposed to do that, but they did. And then all these Blue Angel guys, they're coming out of the, the maintenance control like like army ants. You know, like when you step on the ant pile, they're, and they're everywhere. They all come out, and the maintenance master chief comes out. He's got his hands on his hip. He lifts his sunglasses. And I was in the cargo door, and I had my helmet on and my shield down. And I, we tipped, like saluted. Tipped you know, you didn't look as good as I did, didn't it, though? Oh, I was so pretty. <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, I flipped up my, my lid. And he saw my face, and I was like, you know, woo, rock and roll. And then we went off into the sunset, literally the sunset. <laughs> and then, and because I thought I was that badass, I'm like, man, I crushed it. I totally wowed them. They made me we they made me wait for two weeks because they're like, wow, that they didn't want to tell me they dug me. They didn't want to tell like a me. Little cocky. They, Not you. Yeah. So Not they you. made me sweat it out, and I deserved it. So, yeah, they 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 were going to give it to me hook, line, and sinker. But because I was, you know, kind of strutting a little too much like little chicken hawk, yeah. you know, they let me know so you me, ain't the let, king of the castle. Let here. me ask you, re realistic guy, be honest with me. Yeah. Did you think they were going to take you or no? Was there ever a moment of doubt? I did until I realized after two weeks I wasn't as cool as I thought I was. So and you were scared a little bit. You're like, yeah, no. uh, because I thought I had it in the bag. But they waited to to teach me a lesson. Uh huh. Well, and I learned. But once again, like Cinderella, the carriage will turn into the pumpkin. You got to stay humble. So how did you find out? Did they call you? Was it you had to go log in and see it? Like how did you know? They physically call you in. They face called. To face? They called me and said, you know, welcome. And then they sent a letter. Man, I cried like a baby. Yeah. And I played that. It makes me cry. You still got the letter? You still got the letter? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I cried like a baby, and I, I played that song dreams by van halen over and over and over and over all day That's awesome. and i just cried because remember i was the little engine that could i was the little engine that could mm -hmm. and i still am the little engine that could anything you tell me i can't do i will find a way yeah that doesn't mean everybody's gonna love you a lot of people you know don't even like me but at the end of the day you yeah. can never give up you got to believe in yourself even when nobody else does you know at the at the end and i always say the people that don't like you just don't really know you Okay, that's the reality. You know, some 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 people judge for what they think they know. They don't know. You know, they 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 just don't know. You're a great guy. Got a big heart. Well, I yeah, try you're to have a, grace yeah, with you're people. a little bit, an, you know, you, you're a little animated at times. Well, I'm intense, but, but that's who you are. I'm intense, yeah. and and I realize sometimes that can rub people the wrong way. But I'm not an egomaniac. I'm not narcissistic. It's nah. nothing like that. I'm, I was an overachiever that no matter what I do, no matter what I do, I'm, I'm humble enough to realize just because you had this opportunity, 
you got to remember, first of all, you got the opportunity. Whether you made it for yourself or somebody else gave it to you, you made the most of it. But I'm never going to let anything I do keep me from the task at hand, which is, you know, saving animals or helping people or loving people or bringing people joy. Because at the end of the day, we're all little notes in the big sheet of music. I love to sing the song. I love to be harmonious. But you never do it by yourself. <laughs> This is the time we got to thank our sponsors, Cost Plus Processing, the leader in merchant processing. If you're a merchant out there and you're still paying credit card fees, call 1-855-391-9190. That's 1-855-391-9190. Find out why they are the future in merchant processing. And we're back to the show here. And All right. Uh, that's right. That's oh. right. We are back and we are on fire. Yeah. <laughs> so AJ mentioning, uh, talking about the Blue Angels, talking about obviously rescue swimming and everything. But what was your favorite? What was your most defining moment as a Blue Angel when you're like, Haha, I'm the shit, man? Because there had to have been that moment. The first time that I felt, be, with me, it's it's a team. It's always a team thing. Um, when the first time that the pilots were walking down and, and is it like Top Gun and walking together? Like, well, you know, I, 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 I don't know. Top Gun. I, I wasn't a pilot, you know, I'm a crew chief. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> but, but when the pilots were walking down and you hear <laughs> hand salute, ready to. And, and they're walking, see ya, boss, see ya. When they go spot to spot and you hear that, it's like, wow, man, that's that's heavy. Yeah. And and you peel off behind your pilot, you follow him up the ladder, you go through your your routine. Now you're talking about whatever. I'm not going to get into that, kids. Yeah. But but you're having your moment and you're in front of thousands and thousands of people and, and they're excited and they're ready to be wowed. And knowing that I was a part of that in some way, no matter how big or small of a part, yeah. I got to be a part of the team. And that is incredibly special. Absolutely, absolutely. That was my favorite part. Wow. Them walking down for the first time, shoo, shoo, yeah. you know, the sound of the boots, see ya, <laughs> you know? And it, it was an incredible thing because myself and all the, the guys and gals that I was with, we worked extremely hard, you know, yes, as individuals, but more of a team to be a part of something so incredibly special. I mean. Now, how long were you Blue Angel? I was there four years. Most people Boy. are there four Excuse me. Most people are there three. You know, some people are there two. I was there four. Right. And as much as I loved it and as proud as I am of it, God knows, I couldn't look at anything bright yellow or royal blue for like seven. I didn't even want to look in the sky. I was burnt. Yeah, that was it. Now, I know afterwards you, you still were in the Navy, yes. obviously. And then you become a recruiter of some sort. Yeah, I was a, a Navy recruiter, an honest one. Yeah, and they said you weren't just a uh, Navy recruiter, but you actually were number one, I think, in the region, weren't you? Uno, baby. Uno, yeah, Uno. yeah in, in so. the Northeast, yes, I was. Um, if I didn't spontaneously combust and they put me to sleep eventually, because like I said, I was a wildcat, yeah. um, who knows? I probably would have been Uno in the nation, but, you know, things work out the way they work out. God had other plans for me, but yes. I, and I will tell you this, being a recruiter for me was very fulfilling because I did everything the right way. I was honest. I was respectful. I treated those children, even their parents, but I treated those children like they were my own. Mm -hmm. Now, l let me say, l when I'm talking real life, with all due respect, everybody worked hard. Everybody did their thing. It wasn't that people were too big or not smart enough. They just didn't know they possessed the tools to be what they became. I just helped them get there. Wow. But the thing is, most recruiters in general, you know, they take, you know, if somebody is the package, so to speak, and they can get them in, they get them right in. If they can, they just do what they can. There's no love. It's just business. Okay. With me, it's never business. It's always love first. That's just me. It's hurt me because I'm like Frankie Valley. I do everything mm -hmm. with a handshake. But that ain't everybody. You're, you're so the, you're the true American soldier. I mean, but, let's, let's be honest. But you know, so these kids. You know, one day I got called into my commanding officer's office and he said, AJ, 
it's God's will. Not everybody's cut out for this. So what I'm saying is if I would work out with them till they were in good enough shape or I would study with them till they could pass the exams and for whatever reason they couldn't, you know, God bless them all. They're the ones I remember the most because I couldn't save them. Mm. And it hurts me to this day. It hurts me. Now, the a lot I of think, the- I think that's with everything, though. I mean, don't don't you feel that with any? I mean, think about it. I mean, you're a rescue swimmer. So you started out with your very first rescue. You were unable to save somebody, you know. So, of course, that's going to be heart-wrenching. Of course, that's going to – when you can't help somebody, but you can only be there and give them the encouragement, give them love, you give them everything that you can – well, in that situation, situation, as a rescue swimmer and you're doing a body recovery, the way I dealt with that is I'm bringing them home to their family in some capacity. There you, yeah, there you go. No matter there, how yeah, much or how little, true. in some capacity, I brought them to their family. That's right. That's, right. that's the way that's I dealt with that. It. Absolutely. But when there's a kid down, you know, down at the very end of town where in some places, you know, I was in Pittsburgh, okay, but some of where I recruited out of was way down the block where those old cold towns that are pretty much ghost towns you know you have some kids that they some kids you know didn't even have you know running water you know very sad and i, I wanted to save them all i wanted to save them all and in the my commanding officer who's a wonderful man he goes aj you gotta let them go you gotta let them go i could never let them go it wasn't recovering bodies it wasn't any of that stuff that hurt me because i knew in some capacity i was doing good for even the ones who passed away but the kids that were looking at me and they were they were motivated they were excited they looked at me with those beautiful eyes and they're like i'm gonna be a member of the united states navy and i couldn't save them you know, I, I didn't sleep, I couldn't eat, I would bleed out my mouth, and finally it was over. I couldn't save them, and that's what hurt me. That's what ended my career. You, you know what, I, I don't know if this means anything to you, but, I, but I'll say it anyways. The reality of it is not everybody's cut out to be in the Navy. Let's just be honest with one another. You know what, I wanted to play professional football. That's what I wanted to do. I loved football. I played football. Unfortunately, I wasn't good enough to go pro because they were looking for somebody a little bit taller, somebody maybe is a little bit faster. They, they, you know, they they didn't judge my heart. They judged the size, right? Well, you could have been there, David Bavaro. He played for the Pats, and he was shorter than you. Yeah, different times, different times. These kids today, come on. I still have faith in you. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. But the reality is, there is something for that person. But what you did do for them is you gave them hope. You gave them a way you taught them how they could get back in shape how they could do something that they weren't able to do that's going to help them later in life man yeah. you gotta you gotta you gotta believe that you gotta yeah. believe that that's going to help them later in life and, yeah. and you're a tribute to that so don't ever feel like you didn't save them you probably gave them away it just gave them a different way well i i can tell you this i still stay in touch with some of those kids you know i try to stay in touch with all of them yeah. you know but some kids i was a catalyst a conduit they don't give a damn but there are some they get married they call me they make rank they call me they they tell me thank you there's see you made an impact in their life well i but i wanted to do it for everybody in aj land it's aj land's a beautiful place baby (laughs) it's colorful it is colorful okay and in aj land i can do anything i can do anything um but those kids you know kind of feel bad with what i said i don't want to say anybody wasn't smart i don't want to say anybody wasn't in shape i just want to say they they were challenged, right. okay? No, they and, were they were in a different place of their life. And I didn't want to give up on them. And they had to make changes. Listen, we all have been there. We've oh, all yeah. been in a situation where you weren't good enough at something. Yeah. I don't care if it's a relationship. I don't yeah. care if it's uh, a school. I don't care if it's in its sports or athletics. You know, there's always something. And the reason why that is is because you have to become better. You yeah. can't get better at anything if you don't fail at anything or you're not good enough at anything. Yeah. So the reality is that's how you really find what your really niche is. Because guess what? If you don't want to work hard enough or you can't, if you worked as hard as you can and you're still not the right fit, there's something yeah. better for you, man. I believe that, but at the end of the day, it hurts. at the end of the day. It hurts. You got a big heart. I it, like it. I, uh, I feel... I feel I failed them and it hurt. Nah, you didn't fail them. You didn't fail them. Dude, I'm going to say it again. You know, um, you know, your heart is huge. It's obvious. You know, the, the viewers, I'm sure, can, can feel it just pouring through. And honestly, that's why you are, like I said before, you're American soldier. You are the American. In fact, wait a second. Didn't Queensryche, 
the band Queens Right. Then they have you on their stage representing the American soldier. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And you should be proud of that, man. Well, one of our pilots at the Blue Angels, this guy is an amazing guy. He's done everything. He's been in movies. He's done it all. One of the most motivated, best-looking cats you'll ever imagine. Second you know. best-looking. Well, You're looking at me now. Yeah, well, Lonnie, great guy. <laughs> Len Anderson. You know, all the guys are great in their own way. He was, a, he was just such a... He is such a lively, lively individual, and he did a lot of great things, but he was very supportive of me. So aside from our military, you know, and our rank and recognition, he supported me. I'll never forget one time I had a big gig. I think I was opening up for Skinner or something, and he actually had... A picture of when you my, say open up for Skinner. Would you? What were you doing? My band, Imperial Shreds. I had a Your band. band. That what, did were very you, well. you the guitar player? Oh no, <laughs> I was the heavy metal Tom Jones baby. Yeah, you know. But he kept a sti- He kept my logo, and he, he was very supportive. But this guy, this guy, I don't want to get off track with this. So basically, Lonnie supported everything that I was doing, and and when he was off the team. He goes, I have some friends that want to come out to an air show in Seattle, and this one guy, his little girl, thinks she wants to be a fighter pilot one day. Well, that guy was Jeff Tate. Mm. Mind crime. Jeff you know? Tate. I, I <laughs> Jeff know a little Tate. about Jeff Tate. So Jeff and Susan and their, their girls, um, they came out to um, Boeing Field out there in Seattle, and I met them. And and I was, you know, I was excited, but I was being a professional. And, and Lonnie said, look, AJ, you know, I want you to give them the dog and pony show. I want you to show them around. I, I want you to do this. Nobody else. I want you. And so I did, and I, I I gave it to them, and they loved it. And and we're all in the car after everything, and, you know, I showed them around. I explained things to them. And Susan, Mrs. Tate, and mm-hmm. Jeff, you know, they're looking at me, and, and they're just looking at me. And, and we're just sitting there, and I was bringing them back to their vehicle, and he turns, and he looks at me, and he goes, you are a machine of a man. That's what <laughs> Those he said. Those are words. A machine yeah. of a man. You yeah. are a machine, and he did it in the Wait a second, did mind you crime t- voice. Da, 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 da. Did he have mind his crime. black leather pants on? No, no, no. no. He He's a dad, man. <laughs> oh, okay. He's a dad. He's a dad. He he looked like a dad that day. That day, that day. You know, say, not on stage. On stage, he had those black leather pants. Hey, he's a bad man. <laughs> that is, guy is a, a vocal, gifted individual. Yeah. You know, and and you know, I love them all. I I I ver- I feel very fortunate for the opportunity I had. And I'm I'm very grateful to Jeff and Susan for wanting me there and bringing me, and I got to meet the other guys and and they're wonderful, you know, you know Whip and and Eddie That's and awesome. Scott and you know Parker was there at the time and you know I was I feel very blessed that I had the opportunity and you know things have changed in the camp and but I love everybody and my buddy Todd he's he's amazing I feel very blessed that I had the opportunity to have what I had with them. Well, and, he's done uh, some amazing things on stage. Obviously, I mean his. His voice is just sick, number one. Oh, yeah. But yeah. he's, you know, th- th- what he's done, and in, in, he's got an interesting life, too, because oh, yeah. even with Queen's right, his you know, father, he, his father, well, that's how it started. He wanted to do a concept of them because they did, you know, Operation Mind Crime and everything. And the, he wanted to do, he did a concept album based on, you know, World War II all the way up. And and, and I met him. And so basically, when, when they, his father was in the service. Uh-huh. And um, that's how it started. His father didn't really talk about his military career that much and one day he opened up and jeff was inspired inspired so a couple years later out of nowhere you know i didn't talk to them Mm -hmm. and susan calls me goes aj what are you doing and we lived in pittsburgh at the time where i was recruiting and i said oh i've got to go back to florida i won this award and she goes oh you're still in the navy i said yeah she goes oh man i'm like why I s- she goes are you going to get out soon i said no i have i have a few i have four or five years left she goes oh i'd really like you to be on this record and and do a show or two i'm like what yeah. Wow. So so I was going through some things at the time. And, a lot of respect they gave you, man. Oh, well, they they really did, and I love them forever. I yeah. love them forever. I'm very humble. Now you got on stage with them, right? Uh, well, well. So you know, she's talking to me, and and I'm like, wow, what was that all about? And then I was going through some personal things, and and like I said, based on the circumstance I was talking about, the kids I couldn't save. Um, 
you know, I, I had to I had to get a tune up. Life. I had to go to Naval Bethesda, Walter Reed, get a tune up and sure. stuff, and 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 then things had changed in my career. And uh, Master Chief Ray Bong and uh, Foster, a cu- couple of great guys, um, the, the wonderful, wonderful guys. Um, they they stood by me when times were tough for me, and they helped me do what I did with the music. They they actually gave me an opportunity, and it, it was pretty pretty amazing man it makes me emotional but but anyway i was when i went with queensrike they flew me out to london bridge studios and i had to excuse myself because i saw all those platinum records of all these different people on the walls and you know you know i mean i'm standing at a mic the same area in the same room where Jeff sings and, mm. and, and where Chris Cornell sang and Scott Whelan sang and Eddie Vedder sang and Shannon Hoon sang and all these, there's so many more, you know, uh, you know, and AJ. amazing. And AJ. I, I, and AJ. I cried like a baby. <laughs> Rightfully so. Rightfully you know, so. And I couldn't control myself. So, and then they took me to eat. And it was like, now the cool thing is when Jeff, Jeff himself picked me up in the airport and it like a, a dark blue, like a, like a dark sea blue, a navy blue, Mediterranean blue, whatever, uh, Jaguar. And he had a little poodle named Elvis. I'm like... <laughs> This is like this is like crazy, man. You know, and he picked me up, and he's like, "Hello, AJ." Yeah. You know, and I was like, "Hey, man." <laughs> you know, and they and they they gave me something that, that you know. I remember playing "Name That Tune" in the back of the helicopter with the crew at, in the Gulf. You know, the Northern, Southern, Central Arabian Gulf. You know, and I had that Crockett and Tubbs. I didn't have a. It wasn't a beard. It was from the number two engine soot uh, glued to my face from the heat, just gluing it on. And we'd be playing name that tune. And I would tell people, I'm gonna be a rock star. Now I would never use that term now because I think that's, yeah. But but back then, you know, and they're like, whatever, Frado, as the oil fields are burning, and I'm like, I'm gonna be a rock star like this happy little kid, you know. And and uh and. Later on, people were like, holy shit, man, this kid, wow. When I was with Queensryche and they brought me along and they did what they did, I was supposed to be a five-show novelty. New York, here, because it's where I was from, where I am from. Uh, Seattle, because it's where they're from. Hollywood, because it's Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kansas, middle of the country, and Florida, big military presence. And, you know, I had lived there at the time. Well, I was, you know, big military presence. I had lived there and I was going back there. Right. But, uh they, you know, Queensryche has always had like a, you know, they were the thinking man's medal and, and they had a, you know, they've always had a cult like following the very oh, dedicated fans. They did then, they uh. do now. And, um, they loved me. And instead of being a five show novelty, they kept me on everything. You know, they kept me on everything. And the first time I was on stage with them in April of, of 2009, this moment if you want to talk about a defining moment in life yeah Let's <laughs> you know you know being a rescue swimmer a blue angel uno recruiter all that all of it it's amazing and i'm proud of it when i realized that i had something that i had i could have been a contender i was a contender, <laughs> I am a contender. but uh but when I walked out and I did my routine, my routine, which I adopted from the Blue Angels, basically, Jeff's like, just do your thing. I'm like, I don't know what my thing is, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and I even had the mic in the wrong hand where I was going to have to salute with this. I popped myself in the head the first night. It was like, because I was just <laughs> winging it the first night. But basically, Scott's in my headset and he's like, okay, one, two, three. And then I, one, two, three. And because I'd never had in ears, I was too poor. When I played in clubs, it was piss and spit and i'm leaning over a speaker sweating and screaming i didn't have i wasn't in a fancy room with fancy lights and and a fancy little things in my ears that made me hear everything perfect it was like a whole nother world to me mm. it was amazing right. and 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 i'm like wow so i do this thing i'm doing my routine and all of a sudden the you know the the because it was like like i like a wrestler with wwe music you know yeah and all of a sudden i come out to this big introduction and you could feel the wallowing and the the wallowing and the the buildup was amazing. Mm. And then I went, I went like something like that, and I saluted. Oh, I see that line. And I, I went line. on your feet. <laughs>
and whoosh, the people, I almost said a naughty, they scream so loud. This is the analogy I'll give you. You know when you see something like gum stuck in the stuck in the, the cre crevice of a sidewalk? It's like, mad. it's down in there real, real good. Yeah. That's what happened with my lungs into my rib cage, okay? <laughs> my gum stuck in the sidewalk. <laughs> Basically, those people screamed so loud, the heat blew I could feel it. It, it I, I was, it scared me because it was so powerful. Those people were so powerful. Yeah. The heat was intense. The, the breath, their breath pu pushed me back. Like I said, my lungs went and it got squeezed into my ribs. My heart <laughs> got squeezed into my ribs, my soul. Now, let me ask you, because the viewers don't know this, but they know it now. You did a little singing. You did a little singing growing up. You wanted to be a singer. You are a singer. Yeah. And you turned out to be a pretty darn good one. Well, that was the other thing that was cool about Jeff. You know, they, they saw something that said Blue Angel Crew Chief is the heavy metal Tom Jones. That's crazy. You know, and I will be proud of that more than anything. The heavy metal Tom. What a badass catchphrase. The heavy metal Tom Jones. Yeah. And he dug that. I didn't even know how the hell he heard it. I think it was MySpace back then or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that... I'll never forget that feeling and all those little year, all those years when I was little struggling uh, because I was always an emotional kid, very, very loving, you know, and it was literally the, the ugly duckling of the swan back to the ugly duckling. But, but I was this little boy with a lot of love and people didn't know how to take that back then. Now it's acceptable back then. I mean, I'm very much, I love women. I love my wife. I love women. I love pretty girls, but back then <laughs> they, 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 people didn't know if I was batting for the other team or not, you know, when I was little. So, so, which is fine. I love everybody no matter who they're batting for, you know, but uh, <laughs> so, so, um, <laughs> so, so anyway, as I evolved, I never changed it, And I talk about being humble, but I love people with an intensity that scares people. And, and it's an appreciation. It's, I don't want anything from you. There's nothing you can do or you can give me because I'm rich in flesh. That's what I'm rich in. But people are confused because like Frankie Valley, I do everything with a handshake. People don't do that. They're like, there's gotta be a catch. There's no catch. And I'm still looking to feel accepted in that way because I want to be loved for just being who I am. Not what I did, not what I can do, just for being the person that I am because it's genuine. All right, so I gotta bring you back to earth, AJ. AJ, back to earth for a moment, for a moment, for a moment. <laughs> are you with me? All I right, am. deep breath. <sighs> I want you to think about this. Music was important to you, obviously. Here you go, a circle, you rescue people, you're saving lives, you go to a Blue Angel, and now all of a sudden, you got an opportunity, you're on the big, you're on a big stage. I know when you used to sing at festivals, you used to sing at bars and stuff, you're, used to, you know, you're, you're singing a couple hundred people, a couple thousand, Jeff, you had to have tens of thousand people there. Well, there were a, a lot of people. What I, an experience that had to been. You know, I, did you sit there at that point in time and say, you know what, music, something I'm going to pursue more. I want to, I want to, I want to fulfill more because I know at that point in time in your life, you said, you know, with what you did, there was a lot of hurt. You, you banged up your body. You had concussions. You had a lot of stuff going on. Was music kind of a salvage for like, like is music save you a little bit too? Because people, a lot of times people turn to music because it helps them through something bad in their life. Well, and every song is relatable. Music, yes, and my puppy Lizzie. Somebody tried to throw her. You know, she's a pit bull. Up till that time, you know, you know, I was like most people, ooh, pit bulls. Yeah. And somebody tried to throw in a dumpster. And I know we haven't really got to this yet, but I'm going to tell you this. That this leads yeah, up to that. So basically. I was coming back from Rocklahoma with Tom Kiefer from Cinderella when he was doing the solo thing. And the first time I got turned down for a gig, I was upset. So I guess you could say I had a little bit of an ego. ego. I love Thin Lizzy. And Thin Lizzy at the time was doing a show, and, and I was told I wasn't the right fit to open because I was too much. What the hell is too much? But I love Thin Lizzy. Love them. And I wanted to open for them, and I didn't get the gig. And I was angry. I was upset. I'm like, ah, I got to go take a piss. <laughs> You know, so so I pulled into this uh, 
I don't know if I was still, I was coming out of Tennessee. I don't know. Remember the big rockets, you know, I was coming back. I don't know if I was in Huntsville, Alabama. I don't remember, but I would pulled into a truck stop to go to the bathroom and to blow off some steam. Cause I was angry. I didn't get the gig and I met Lizzie. So there was this lady crying. She had a little, a little, a little boy and she, and she, this dog was, you could tell it was a puppy. It had the mommy boobies, but you could tell it was a puppy and had like, looked like cigarette burns and a maggot on her and everything. And she was afraid of men, but the lady was crying. I'm like, what's wrong? She goes, I called, you know, somebody to come get this dog, but they're going to kill her if, if, if they come get her. And I don't, I'm afraid to put her in the car because my son's in a car seat. And what if she freaks out and tries to eat him or bite him? So I had an FJ cruiser at the time. I didn't even let anybody drink water in it. It was perfect. So this dog looked at me and I was, you know, those little Snyder treats, the little peanut butter pretzel treats. I gave her them. I, she drank out of my water bottle. I'm yeah. like, I love this puppy. This is a pit bull. This don't, huh? So I'm like, well, I'll take her and I don't want her to die. Um, so I put her in my car within 10 minutes. I was bleeding from flea bites everywhere all the way back to Pensacola. And then I'm at the vet, every penny that was made that day. Cause all my, every penny I make, by the way, goes to charity. But, but that day, well, it still did, but the money I made that day, I went into the vet's office, scenic Hills vet, and I got this dog and we have two little weenie dogs at home, Luke and Lila. I can't take this dog home. So whatever. So all of a sudden I'm in line and this little Southern lady goes, young man, Jesus wants you to have that dog. I'm like, huh? Jesus wants me to have this dog. <laughs> so, so we brought her in. She had worms. She had everything. She, she was in rough shape. Somebody tried to throw her in a dumpster. She bounced off and fell out. That's, that mm. was kind of the backstory to what I was telling you. So, so anyway, uh, anyway, I took her you know, you know, to the vet and Pensacola drove her all the way there, brought her home. And I'm like, well, you know, I t gave her a bath. She cried because she had wounds and boo-boos and everything, gave her the medicine. And I figured we'd just hold on to her. I, I, I'm like, but Jesus wants me to have this dog. And she didn't eat Luke and Lila. We got home. I'm like, this is good, right? So very, very cool. And um, I'm like, this is my doggy. So I came, he, the puppy was asleep on my lap. And Liz, and <laughs> Kristen comes home and she looks at the dog. She looks at me. She goes, you mother beep, you know, and that was it. But this is the thing. I wanted to call her Luna. But then after the experience of not getting the gig, I'm grateful because as much as I love then Lizzie, I didn't get the gig. I would have never pulled into that truck stop. So Lizzie. Lizzie Lynette, you mm -hmm. know, Lizzie Lynette Frado is because of, you know, thin Lizzie. That's why her name is Lizzie. And, and she changed my life between her and music. Honest to God, I feel bad saying this. You know, the one thing I can tell you I'm proud of failing four time, being a four time loser of ending my life. You didn't fail. My point is I'm proud to be a failure right. four times of, course, of, course. of ending my life. That's what I mean by oh, that. Right. That's what I mean. God, you really want to end your life. I've wanted to die for as long as I can remember. What would, what would, what would get you to that point? I mean, I, obviously, you know, you're a hero. You've, you, I'm you've AJ. Saved, you, I'm but, fucking but, AJ but, right, right, but you saved so many lives. I mean, you got to think about this because the reality is we only get one life. That's it. We don't get two. We don't get three. We don't get four. We get one life. We get one opportunity to be AJ. You're, you're the only AJ. I feel things. I feel things I can't describe. I know things. I don't know what I know, but I know. I know what's going on in your life. I can feel things. But whatever I'm feeling is I take it to the point where it's agony for me yeah. because I want you to feel better. And um. I'm glad you it, failed. It, it's it's like it's like when I when I look at somebody and I I want to love them or I want them to love me because I know they're hurting or they're trying to put on a show for me. I'm an entertainer. I'm the Art Frodalger. I'm the ball David Lee Roth. You know you know even Brett Michaels say look AJ Lee Roth. 
This yeah. is my show, mm -hmm. you know, but I love Brett. Love you, buddy. Yeah. You know, but I love that. I take that as a term in endearment, just like the heavy metal Tom Jones. You yeah. Know, H. A. Lee Roth. Now, listen, but, real quick. I want to, because I want to talk to you, because you, you worked with a lot of cool people, like a Brett Michaels. What was it like? I mean, you know, did you get starstruck at all? Or at that point in time, in stage of your life, I mean, I, I know you worked with Tony Danza. I mean, some of, some of the Cinderella, Skid Row, no. you, you, you know, how, what was that? What was that like? Because Hold they're on. doing what you want to do, right? I don't get starstruck because, like I said, man, there's nothing more humbling than swimming through another man's flesh. So that's why when I look at somebody, no matter who or what you are, no matter how people bow to you, I bow to no one right. except Jesus. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, mm -hmm. don't want don't want to mess him up. But you know what? He's also want to keep you alive. So you know, and that's why you had too many great things to do here on earth and glad that you know you did fail those four times getting into the singing career and and what you've done with singing talk about aj's brave hearts because i know aj brave hearts is your singing but it's also you've done some cool things with the pitbull rescues with it too well aj's brave hearts is a 501c3 charity in a rock band mm -hmm. and and let me back up one more second uh, to what i was saying is basically when i feel things and the way i love it's genuine and people when you're honest and you're loyal and you're and you're to the death respectful and you do everything with a handshake people think it's too good to be true when i make a mistake when i make a mistake and if i make a mistake with something that belongs to you whether it's your money or it's anything if i make a mistake i can't live with myself i need to fix it i will fix it and even if you're a bazillionaire and i make a mistake i'm going to pay you what i owe you because that's what's right but Back to that thing before we go on to the other is I have an insatiable love for people, not in a crazy weirdo way, but I, I wish people could take it face value that it's genuine, that when I, when, I, when I care, I care. There's no agenda. If you're good to me, if you did anything for me, I will be loyal to you for the rest of my life to the death. But some people are like, well, that's either weird or they just think it's bullshit. I don't know any other way to be. So once again, being humble, Cinderella, the carriage turns into the pumpkin, the whole nine. I relive that every day like Groundhog's Day because I will not allow myself, no matter what I have accomplished, I didn't do it by myself. I had help. I had Kristen who believed in me no matter what. She loved me no matter what. You know, when other people walked away or gave up or couldn't handle the power that I am, because I am power. Yeah, no doubt about that, for sure. And you can't buy what I have. And that's what Jeff, that's another thing Jeff Tate told him. He goes, AJ, you have, you, I, I said, why did you pick me? You could have picked somebody who could sing way higher. He goes, why, why, you know, I could, yeah, there's other people that can sing high, you know, like whatever. Can why? you sing high? I, I'm the brown sound, baby. Come on, let me hear it. Let me like give me a little something. With give me a little something. Come on. Hold on. I'm not no, Give me a bar. Give me a bar. Just give me so a bar. So I got to finish this, tough guy. <laughs> yeah, give me a bar. I said, why me? And he goes, you have an emotional ferociousness. Why not? You have an emotional ferociousness. You can't buy it. It just is what it is. And when you step out, that it's incredible. And then I never worried about being him or Steve Perry or Bruce Dickinson or Rob Halford. None of them ever again. I was proud to be what I was, a soul singer and a metal body, you know. I'm waiting on that bar. Give me that bar. Set me free, why don't you, babe? All right. Get out my love, why don't you, babe? Uh, you don't really need me. You just keep me hanging on. Oh, you still got the pipes. You still got the pipes, baby. So tell the viewers a little bit more about AJ's Brave Hearts. Well, AJ's Brave Hearts is a 501c3 charity, and it's a rock band. Um, when my career ended and all those things, you know, I'm pretty much a wildcat. Like I said, you know, uh, the Van Halen album that was in the Blue Angel hangar, 5150 is also a code for something else. Go ahead and look up 5150, people. What is it? Uh, just look it up. No, tell us. Come on, man. Well, you know, it's a woo-woo-woo, you know. No, I don't. What does that mean? And it's uh, something. Now you made me forget, but it's <laughs> what, something 50, along. 50? Are you going like to want to know? Something psycho. Panda, look up you know, 5150. Tell us what 5150 is, 5150 is a code for, like, psychopath. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. All something right, so something cool. along those lines. Well, shoot, so I should be 51, 52 at times. Yeah, times a thousand. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but um, but so so to be useful and productive at all times, because I have to be. You can't be what I was. And I, I don't want to call myself an alpha anything. I mean, Alpha Juliet, A in phonetic alphabet, AJ, Alpha Juliet. But that's the only alpha I would like to be called. Um. Uh, in the things that I did with AJ's Brave Hearts, always trying to be useful and productive. Always trying to be useful and productive. Um, Kristen started up the charity so we could earn so I could help. Because of Lizzie, I wanted to help pit bulls. I wanted to help animals in general because pit bulls are misunderstood, and so am I, very, to this day. Um, even people who get me and love me, they still misunderstand me at times, and then they come back to loving me after, you know, I might have wore them out, but then, then they always come back. I love the fact that you that you do that. I mean, you haven't just rescued one pit bull. You've rescued many pit bulls. Oh, well, you know, I try to do donate and I have a friend who named Sasha who's got Rosalie and friends and it's a puppy a special needs puppy that she saved who had a lot of neurological problems and she since passed but Sasha and her friend Michelle and Lisa and some wonderful folks um, they have done some really amazing things over the years for animals and so she is the one that you know I try to really do things for when I can. Right now, Br Brave Hearts is broke because pandemic and haven't had a lot of gigs, so that's a whole other thing. But um, because of Sasha and she helped me, one of my puppies passed away, got bit by a snake, and I got three of my rescues from her. So I went from a guy with one dog that didn't understand pit bulls, and now I ended up with, <laughs> when uh, Luke got bit by a snake, I ended up with Leonidas, Lazarus, and Little Lyric. Um, who's my kiss puppy? She's I the love the one. names. Where do you, where do you come up with names? When you name them? Well, when I was little, um, my dad said I could have this dog that I wanted to name Libby for some reason. If if the Mets beat the Red Sox in the World Series, I could have the dog, and her name was Libby. So when I got when I grew up, every pet we've had, you know, we had Luke, Lila, Lizzie, Leonidas, Lazarus, little tiny Lyric, and and you know we had uh, Lucy and Lars and Lola, <laughs> and and um, geez, am I forgetting one of my poor little babies? That we've we've had a lot of them. I'll, I'll, I'll have to. Did you say uh, Lisa? I didn't hear Lisa. I didn't baby hear baby Lars. Little baby Lars. Yeah, okay. Baby Lars. Yeah. So so. That 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 that's been our crew over the years, and I have four rescue pits right now. Right now, you got four. What is yeah. that? What is that like living with four four pit bulls? It's a lot of scooping. I'm getting more <laughs> carpal tunnel. You know, <laughs> a lot of poop scooping. But uh, they're my babies. Two of them are they're special great dogs. Great. Yeah, and you know, and it it's been arduous at times, but they're my babies, and and I love them more than anything in the world. That because they always love you back. They don't hurt you. People hurt you. Mm -hmm. The animals just love you. Yeah, they're and, misunderstood. Yeah. All the time. So it started with, you know, you know, helping out animals. You started with Lizzie and graduated and, uh, you know, doing what I can. And it, and down in Florida, you know, you got water moccasins, rattlesnakes, stuff like that, and, and uh, cotton mouths. And, you know, uh, uh, you might survive. A, a, a dog, they swell up, they get infected in their bloodstream, and it, and it kills them. So for, like, lower-income families that really love their pet, a, a vial of um, – uh, of anti-venom could be anywhere from three to eight hundred dollars so i can't afford to give everybody 800 bucks but if i could give them three or four at least get them in the door and the dog has a fighting chance mm -hmm. and and then like little things at surgeries and sasha had an animal that had to have a surgery i had done um some things for others but i can only do little increments like 200 300 bucks there you know aj's brave hearts is a mom and pop um so i might have five ten grand sometimes but I've never had more, but over over the years we've probably given away over a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, over That's over awesome. the the years. But started with animal rescue, and then um, you know veterans with invisible injuries advocating um, uh, at Toys for Tots Marine Corps Reserve. They they have what's called Toys for Tots, and at Christmas every year I put on a AJ's Brave Hearts Toys for Tots rock concert and get a bunch of friends of mine to volunteer to play with me and stuff. And last year in the Finger Lakes, we we raised eight thousand dollars in toys, um, in in some other things, and um, 
some wonderful people donated all kinds of things for for to help me also with pet rescue so the children the pets blankets uh you, just so many so many so many things and you've done some amazing things but you know so it graduated from the animals from the animals to veterans with invisible injuries to the children and then veterans for tell us that again say that again what was that veterans with veterans with invisible injuries see a lot of people that they'll look at somebody and they're like man that guy's an idiot he's whacked out something's wrong with that dude so they 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 judge them and they make fun of them and they talk bad about them i know all about it and um now, I could easily just eat somebody's trachea or dis destroy them, but I realize they don't understand that some people have invisible injuries. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I've busted up this, that, 16 concussions, whatever. I had my foot reconstructed, all this crap, whatever. But if people can't see the injury, they just assume they're just an Normal. idiot or a wacko. Or not, right. it, it, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm here to tell you that's not true. Uh, they're not. You just assume. And you know what they say about assuming. So, uh, you know, unless somebody, if, if you're disfigured or you're missing something or you have a giant scar, that those are the people that people look at and they're like, oh, that poor guy. But they don't realize the damage they do to people when they pick on them or talk bad about them or say something about them. And they don't realize what that individual may have done for you, for their country. Right. You just think they're a fucking retard. Right. And I hate that word, but that's how I've been treated. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, that but that's why I have grace with people, and I don't eat their trachea <laughs> because I'm not, and you should never use that word. That's a terrible word. But the reason why I used it because it's how people can be sometimes. Not everybody. There are some people that have loved me through thick and thin, but there's some people. You always hear today, oh, let this sit out of your life. You don't need this negativity. But there are some people that realize it's not a negativity. It's an invisible injury. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean me or anybody else with my circumstances gets a pass. If I'm a jerk, I'm a jerk. And you shouldn't like me. Tell me to go to hell. I'm a human. And if I'm naughty, you have the right to do that. But for the people who judge unknowing or just don't care, that's what I'm talking about. Just because you can't see the injury doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And I had some wonderful doctors, Dr. Williamson, Dr. David Williamson, um, my psychiatrist at, at Naval Bethesda. He's, he was also became head of the TBI unit. And like I said, you know, I'm what I am. I'm colorful because that's what I am. But I've hit my head a couple of times. And he... That's why AJ's Brave Hearts exist, because when I had to go for a stay at the inn a few times and get some tune-ups, I said, when I get out of this hospital bed, I'm, I'm going to start a charity rock band. He goes, AJ, take your medicine, go to sleep. And then when I sent him a bobblehead, a picture of one of his favorite bands, signed, autographed, he's like, all right, roger that. You know. So I love him forever, because um, one time I realized if I let this, if I gave up, if I gave up one time, I was just hurting really, really, really bad. And I just figured Kristen and the kids were way better off without me. And um, I'm like, if he answers the phone, if he answers the phone, it'll be all right. I kept calling. He wasn't answering. And I, so I, I got everything ready. And I was, I was going to do it. I was, that was it. It was going to happen. And uh, because what happened is, I had an amazing military career, and then I'm rocking with Queensryche. I'm doing all these amazing things. Then all of a sudden, I realized after I got sent home on the 4th of July in 2009, they started messing with my medicine a little bit, and then I realized, wait a second, I have no more uniform. I have no more boots. There's no more tour buses and autographs and airplanes and records for me to sign. I, it, and then they started changing my med and it, 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 something happened. Mm. It wasn't about having those kind of things. It was about living my life. Right. And all of a sudden it stopped. Everything in my life just stopped. And one day I was taking a shower and I washed my hair, you know, Johnson's baby shampoo and the water got turned off. Kristen was saving our home, our vehicles and everything. It was like a bad country song, you know? Um, but one day the water turned off and I was fully lathered up with baby shampoo and, and it was more than I could bear. Um, because I felt like I blew everything. And, and so that was it. That was going to be the fourth time. And I hesitated, and I had the phone in my hand because I knew 
Anthony was only in like second or third grade. I'm like, Anthony will be the one that finds me. So I, I waited. I said, wait, stop. I'm like, I'm going to call one more time. And if Dr. Williamson answers the phone, I'm going to live. But if he doesn't, I'm sorry, champ. I love you, buddy, but daddy's going to die. And uh, so it, I hit the button and it rang and it kept ringing. <laughs> I went like this. I just looked up. I said, Jesus Christ. And um, it's still ringing. And I went to hit the button. And I heard, hello, AJ, AJ, get Kristen, get on a plane right now. And I was on my way to Walter Reed. I was on my way to Naval Bethesda. Uh, that became Walter Reed in uh, Bethesda, Maryland. And uh, here, <laughs> ta-da! AJ, AJ, I just want to. Yeah. I just want to That's tell AJ's you, Bravehearts. Listen He's me. from, he sounds like Braveheart. He's from Scotland. Listen to me. AJ's Bravehearts. Yeah. Listen to me. I, I, first of all, I appreciate you sharing the story with everybody. And it's touching. And um, I, I hope anybody out there listening who's thinking the same thing that you are stops right now yeah and they don't go through with it because since then you've done so many amazing things mm -hmm. and you still got way more amazing things you're a hurting man i see you're hurt man it hurts me to know that you're hurting um i kind of feel like you right now but i love you bro i love you too <laughs> but i kind of feel like you right now because i you know, when you can't help somebody, but you can only be there for them. Yeah. You can only tell them you love them and you care about them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's still their decision in their life. You can't sit there and watch over them 24-7. You can only tell them. I know. Um, but, you know, there's plenty of help out there oh, yeah. for people. Mental health is a hard thing. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you know what? You went through a lot, man. You've seen a lot. You've done a lot. You've done a lot of good, and you saw a lot of bad. Mm -hmm. And you have to deal with that every day. And most people out there don't know what that's like. You know, like you said, the invisible is so real to me. I never looked at it like that. Never thought about it like that. But the truth of the matter is, yeah, there's a lot of people that we do judge by what we see or their actions. But we really don't know because you don't see the underlining. You don't see the day to day. And that's why this world's so cruel, right? They just need to be a lot, a lot nicer to people. And I say all the time, you know, you, you got to stay positive. You got to be nice and, and, and understand that you do have one life and you got to make it worth something. And that's why some people love me and some people hate me, but they're going to hear me. That stage for me is a very powerful place because I feel no pain. Nothing hurts. My body, my mind, my soul, my emotions do not hurt. I realize how rich in flesh I am. I realize at that moment that I, regardless of my, my circumstances, what I, however they may have come or went or still are here, I realize that I have a gift that you cannot buy. You cannot buy it. And I know some people don't like me for it because they think I'm narcissistic or egomaniac, and I'm not. I just have a lot of love, and I don't know. My body is breaking apart because I can't control the love that I have, the intensity of that emotion. It's my body can't take who I am anymore. So anybody who ever thought I was something that now I hopefully know you, hopefully you know I'm not, that I am the real deal. Um, I don't want anything from you. I want to give you what I got. And, and some people love me, some people love to hate me because what I'm capable of doing, no connection, no you know, good old boy system will ever stop me. You might keep me from Madison Square Garden, but you can't, me, you can't keep me from winning over anybody who sees what I do when I do it because that emotion is real and it's raw. I always wanted to be the ultimate warrior, you know? <laughs> I don't have the hair for it anymore. But we all are in our own way. We all are. So you know what, uh, AJ, real quick also, you know, you've done a lot of work with Monsters of Rock, yeah. which, is, uh, which is cool for the, for the viewers and people that are out there and stuff. Monsters of Rock is a cruise that you go on and you listen to a bunch of bands. So there's a lot of people there that just love rock and roll. A lot mm -hmm. of people that love music, yeah. and they just party their asses off with these bands. Mm -hmm. um, you've been doing this for many, many years. You're, you're like the main guy. 
Well, I'm 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 a cog in the machine. I'm a cog in the machine. An an amazing machine. Uh, at the end of Queen's Reich, a production that I I was on with Queen's Reich, I met a gentleman that that was just a wonderful guy. There's a long story, but I'm only going to tell part of it now. Maybe down the road you can use it again. But his name is uh, Mr. Larry Morand, and he's like uh, my sea daddy of rocks, I guess you could say, since we're on a boat. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he said, I'm going to utilize your size, your talent, and your personality. And a couple years later, he called me, and he did, and he gave me an opportunity. So Dr. Williamson gave AJ's Bravehearts life. Larry Moran gave AJ Frado and AJ's Brave Hearts the the platform to become AJ's Brave Hearts and raise over a hundred thousand dollars. And uh, Monsters of Rock, uh, Cruise to the Edge, Moody Blues Cruise, Monsters on the Mountain. Um, uh, Larry, he, he that's his brainchild. He he created these things, and he's allowed me and so many other people to be a part of it. It's like the land of misfit toys, but it's the most beautiful toys you could imagine. We're a family, <laughs> we're a team, and uh, thanks to Larry and Mike and Bill Devers and all these wonderful people and all the people that we're with, I, I love them all. But Larry gave AJ's Brave Hearts the platform to help it become what it has, and hopefully all of you will continue to help it grow. Man, it was awesome. I, I took that cruise, man, at a time in my life. I mean, I didn't realize what to expect because you don't know. You're on a boat with all different – and the only thing that you worried about was – different bands playing at different times oh yeah and it's like you know you want to see both and they're both but you know what they were really like they played other times so you were able to see everybody which oh was yeah really well cool it's like larry remember clash of the titans when they're moving the little guys around in the arena <laughs> <laughs> that's larry that's larry and 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 he, he's wonderful he gave me an opportunity i'll always be grateful to him and that many people will be resurrected a lot of uh music careers and they don't call him a legend for no reason so yeah. thanks larry that's awesome that's awesome and you know you're still doing that right you still you got a yes. cruise coming up soon? When's uh, we, we do have uh, Masters of Rock uh, Cruise 2024, Cruise to the Edge on the Blue Cruise, and then next August, Monsters on the Mountain. Um, oh, it's awesome. That's a land That's a land gig. It, look it up. It's awesome. Yeah. It's my favorite one uh, uh, out in uh, Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge. He's done. He's just been. It's, it's amazing. Why is it your favorite one? Why do you like that one more? Well, we've done a lot of cruises, tons of them, and they're amazing. They're amazing. But something about those mountains of Tennessee, he just, he, he his mind, the way he creates things, man, it, it, it's just, I, I've learned a lot from him. I didn't have good credit till I saw the way he worked his his Platinum American Express on the on the road, and now I got plenty of points, too. I learned a lot from Larry. So, <laughs> yeah, I got fantastic credit. It's like eight. 40. That's good. That's yeah, good thanks, stuff. Thanks, buddy. Good. Let me let me borrow some of that. <laughs> I need I need some of yeah! that. Yeah, yeah. I said I had good credit, but that's <laughs> all I got, baby. AJ's Bravehearts needs some help. There you go. Help us out. There you go. Um, you know, working with so many different artists and so many different people. Obviously, there's different levels of of characters. You know, you, you know, you being uh, understandably known as one of them, right? Sure. There's a lot of different people, a lot of different characters. Sure. Who's one of your favorite ones to work with? You know what? Everybody. And besides Jeff Tay, I want to put Jeff Tay aside because that was a separate, separate. Yes, everybody's special in their own way. Um, you know, because everybody's got a story, and 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 you know, Striper's wonderful. They they were wonderful, very family-ish. You know, very compassionate people. Um, Lisa, Michael's wife, she she she's great. She got a huge heart. You know, Michael. You know, you know he wears his heart on his sleeve. I mean, the the guys in Striper, Oz, and and Robert, and and Perry, and you know Michael. It's just they're amazing. They're still putting out amazing records, albums. It's amazing. But they got a lot of heart, a lot of soul, and they're they're very genuine uh, in that way. And they just wonderful people. I love I love them. Um, just great people. Um, you know, Tony Dan's, it's like working with my uncle, AJ. Hey, hey, I need you. All right, so what's going on? What do I keep you around for? Eh? He's the greatest. He's I love still him. Still outperforming. You know what? How Remember, old is he you now? know how people look at the Farrah Fawcett poster, and, but the, okay, it, you know, just you know, it's pretty, right? Everybody loves that original one. Then you see the Bruce Lee, the the Last Dragon poster. If you cut the head off Bruce Lee in that poster. 
that's Tony Danza, 72 years old. You cut the head off Bruce in that poster. He's got he does these workouts. He's got the striations in his friggin' shoulders that look like friggin' pinwheels. Wow. The guy's built like an Adonis. I mean, he's amazing, highly intelligent. He's told me amazing stories. I love him. He, I didn't even know I didn't even know he sang. I know he's an actor, well, obviously. Well, he's but, an actor. But just just so you know, they used to call me Tony Danza when I was a kid. Really? They said I looked like Tony Danza. That well, was that was my comparison. Back then, him and Scott Bale. Yeah. Those oh. were the two back in the day when I was younger. Roger and, that. In shape. In shape. I, I hear you. You're still pretty. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. In your Thanks, own buddy. way, honey. Oh, but uh Tony, Tony is he he's incredible. He does a lot of rat pack stuff. He he sings and tells stories and they're amazing. God, I love that man. Uh yeah. he's just he he's incredible. The things he's told me gives me chills just thinking about just amazing. Um I, I will tell you like uh Cinderella, you know, because of Larry, I ended up with Cinderella's uh uh on Monsters Rock Cruise, you know, I was I helped out one night and Tom Kiefer literally fell into my arms because he leaves it all out there you know jeff and and eric and and freddie i love freddie freddie's amazing he's winning emmys all the time you know uh let me ask fred cory the drummer who, who, um, who's the biggest pain in the ass just throw it out there um well i now come on who's the biggest pain in the ass no no by sign there's hey, somebody. confidential adelie oh, oh yeah, yeah i can't even say confidential <laughs> adelie minky i can't say the word <laughs> Say the word for me. <laughs> Confidential. You don't want to say I it. can't say it. Yeah, you agreement. Just it. I sign them. I can't do that. You don't. Want um. To. You know. You know. You know. Brett's really colorful, and all the guys. I mean, I love them all. Poison. They're wonderful. Everybody's. Everybody's wonderful. But I'll tell you something about. Um. I recently had an opportunity. Um. With with Skid Row, and there's something about the genuineness of the way these guys treat each other. Like, uh, you know, uh, Dave Snake Sabo and Rachel Bolin and Scotty Hill, uh, they're great. And, 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 you know, they have Rob on drums now. Um, um, and, and, uh, Eric singing and, you know, different guys, wonderful guys, wonderful, wonderful guys, but Scotty snake and Rachel, um, all these years at Skid Row's been, they're Jersey boys. I mean, and they got that blue collar grit about them. They're real, you know, they're, they're, they come from immigrants as well. Like us, they're hardworking, hard nose. Um, they're great at what they do. Amazing songwriters, but the way they treat each other, I noticed, you know, everybody goes through things in life. It's your family, it's your friends, you know, but the the way I watch these guys interact with each other, they love each other. They care for each other. They got uh, their front of house guy's name's Tony. Uh, he, he's a great guy. He, he works for Hot Fog Hat. He used to be uh, Steven Tyler's guy in Aerosmith on the pump tour. He was in a very, God bless him, was in a very bad motorcycle accident. And even he's still great at what he does, but, you know, some of the things that he deals with are difficult. R Rob and these all these guys... They didn't just go get another guy. He's still there. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing. He's still there, and they help him. These guys are very humble guys. They've done all these amazing, great things that they've done. But the way they treat each other, it is the most authentic, genuine thing I, I just I haven't seen I haven't seen that with just it's not just about you know musicians or artists or that that entertainment business but in general the way I see these guys and the way I watched them interact with each other that was incredibly unique. That's right. Well, they have a level of respect for one another too. When you've been through what they what, what you're going through, and everybody understands what it takes. Well, because... they don't really know nothing about me, but what I'm but with them the way. I'm, I watch them interact with their crew, right? With each other. I'm right. saying these guys have known each other, started this band, you know, number one together. All these things right. that they've That's done. That's what I mean. Their level of respect. They have a level of respect for each other. But when you see it, just to watch it, and I was like, these guys are. It's just everybody, you know, has their thing. But watching them, interacting with them, the way they are with each other, yeah. you know, it, it, it was. It was heartwarming. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's really cool. Um, you think you'll ever play on the Monsters of Rock, or you you be on that now? You I've been on Monsters of Rock five or six times. Yeah. Um, um, I'm the I'm the lead artist security specialist, and and that's my position. Mm -hmm. I feel honored and privileged that I had again, the opportunity protecting others, protecting others again. But 
I'm there. I'm a part of the family. I'm a cog in the wheel. And, and, and I feel very grateful for that. I'm, I'm grateful that he's let me play. Maybe I'll get to play on uh, Monsters on the Mountain one day. Oh, or I want to see that. I, see I would that. love for that. that, but you know, uh, um, we'll, we'll see what happens, but, but you know I'm what? grateful I do get for a what question. I had. I do get a question because you got some connections, you know, on the Monsters of Rock Cruise, how the hell do I get a suite, man? I try, I try to book a suite. The suites are always booked. They're always saved. You know, why is that? You know? I can neither huh? confirm or deny any knowledge on that. <laughs> yeah. We'll uh, see. We'll see. Can you get hook, well, hook Wham Bam up with a suite, man? Come on. Well, maybe you could do Wham Bam out there. We'll That's see, right. We'll see Let's what go. happens. I think that they would love you. I know they would love you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that would be great. <laughs> but I <coughs> I will say one more thing and that uh, uh, I'd like to say. Um, when I was out with Cinderella, um, God, I love that. That's where I cut my teeth, you know, going from performer to production, mm -hmm. so to speak. And Larry brought me out and taught me. And he's got a great guy, Gino, that's been with him for years. And I love Gino. And and so I became like a backup uh, quarterback, so to speak, when Gino um, went and did other things for a little while. So, you know, Larry taught me a lot of great things. And we have wonderful. I love everybody. I know I didn't say everybody's name, but I love you all. Um but uh, one thing I learned when I was out there with Larry, I was just observing one night. I was just watching everything. And, you know, I'm always hyper and excited. But this time I was calm and collected and compartmentalized. And I'm looking at something. And I realized not just from the stage did I had a, a, an opportunity, a gift to make people happy. But when you're in production... You can't do it all the time. You can't do it for everybody, you know, depending upon the size you're tore on. you got to be careful because that's people's money. You don't play with people's money. Mm. But I can play with my own. And basically, um, what I learned out there, like speaking from experiences when I was hurting or hurting, if you're somebody who bought a ticket to go to a show, mm -hmm. okay, but you want to end it all, but you still have that ticket, and you're like, well, I'm going to go to the show. You got that ticket to that show. And you go in there and you look at things. And this is what I realized having the opportunity, the gift to be a part of this entertainment world. It's a power. And what it is is you go in there and what I realized, you buy the ticket from the ticket guy. You get the, the hot dog from that guy, the, the beer from that guy, the T-shirt from that guy. The, the, the manager puts this and that together. The prod guys put all the other things together. The sound guy does what he does. The band plays. And everybody in their own way has something to do with making the show go on and giving it that emotional power. Mm -hmm. And you bought that ticket. And you went into that show, but you're like, I'll go to the show, but I'm going to die after. But then you go realize these people, all these people, all these little cogs in the wheel put this beautiful thing together. And you're wearing that T-shirt and you're drinking your beer and you're eating your hot dog and you're screaming your heart out to your favorite song that all these people put together. Because mm -hmm. we're all little notes and big sheet of music. We make that song harmonious we bring that melody together and it's not one person not just the guys on stage it's everybody who makes it happen so we're all little notes in the big sheet of music and i learned that and that's what i told myself when i was out there with larry and cinderella and i'll never forget that and no matter what happens along with all the other stuff i said about being humble and being grateful because i am grateful for absolutely everything we're all little notes in the big sheet of music yeah. You know what? Uh, a disappointing day today because I know you were supposed to open up for Lou Graham. Uh, yes. That was going to be here at the Kodak uh, Theater in Rochester, New yes. York. And I know that was an exciting moment. I was excited to watch you be on stage today. Front row, baby. Front row, baby. I was right there, man. Yep. You know that. But, um, you know, what is, what is I mean, COVID, right? Something got sick. Well, um, I don't, I don't the, know exactly what it is. but um, I don't know exactly what it is. Um, but the show got I, canceled. Either yeah, way, the I wasn't canceled. sure who it was um, in the band. Gotcha. Uh, hasn't been put out yet, so to speak. But at, uh, at the end of well, the day, the show gets canceled. The show gets canceled. So you get canceled. It's, it's not canceled. Moved. It's postponed. Postponed. I'm so sorry. there working on a day and we have AJ's Brave Hearts has been invited back. Nice. And I'm very grateful to Mr. Bob Galano uh, who's, you know, Lou's guy and, and, you know, thank you to the folks at uh, 
Kodak uh, Center for taking Bob's word for it. And thank you, Mr. Lou Graham, for giving me the opportunity as well. And all the great staff there and my buddy Shannon and, you know, all the guys, you know, with Lou. And I got to meet Mr. Tony Franklin tonight, who's a great guy. Look up Tony Franklin. That I had dinner with him before we came to do the Wham Bam podcast tonight. And that, that, was, that was pretty cool. That was cool. So even though the show didn't go on, it will go on. It was only postponed. Um, I got to break bread with those guys tonight. There is a makeup date, and it's going to be amazing, and you better be there. Can't wait. We're going to bring it, baby. We're going to love me or hate me, baby. You're going to hear me. <laughs> That's it. Turn that shit up till it feeds back, baby, because AJ's coming for you. AJ, tell the viewers right now, where can they find you? Where can they find AJ's Braveheart? Where can they make a donation? You said, you know, you're broke right now. Yeah, AJ's yeah. Brave, Braveheart's broke. Yeah. We want to get you some money. We want to get some funds. We want to help out. You're awesome. helping out so many people. You're helping out pit bulls. You're helping pit bull rescues. You, you're helping out veterans. You're, uh, you're the American Legion now, too. What are you doing with the American Legion? You're like commander chief there. Well, too. I'm, Do, I'm doing uh, there? the commander of Winnick Post, uh, Geneva American Legion, Winnick Post 396 in yeah. Geneva, New York. And um, we're doing great th things here. And, and what people need to realize about the American Legion and these clubs all over the country you know a lot of folks are, are you know these these clubs are ceasing to exist and we really want people to realize an American Legion VFW things of this nature they are not just a bar and a banquet hall the American Legion is about veterans their families the community the children and Americanism be proud of who and what you are and 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 you we got to come together we got to do great things you turn on the TV this day and age it's about vanity and it's it's about you know agendas and people shoving stuff down people's throats no that's not what it's about it's about being family and friends and coming together and doing great things for your neighbor that's what the american legion is about and that's what i'm about and i'm very proud and honored to have been brought in here as somebody who is a volunteer but somebody who's helping resurrect something very special in our town. And we have a great staff of people. We have wonderful members. Um, the sons of the American Legion, our auxiliary members, our legionnaires, everybody's working hard as a team and a family to do great things in Geneva and throughout the Finger Lakes. And, and there's lots of great legions in the Finger Lakes and my buddy Fred over in Phelps and some you know other places. We're trying to bring everybody together to help each other. Well, I'll tell you, you know? you've done a great job. Uh, yeah. you're the buzz is already happening. I know it was struggling here. I remember growing up, going to American Legion, watching Fourth of July fireworks yeah. and you know cookouts and doing those things, those picnics. It, it was a you know good time. Glad that you're keeping that alive. It's just like fill and the dreams. If you build it, they will come, and we're right. doing it because we're we're a family. It's not about an individual or individuals. It is about a family, a team, about America. All right, AJ. Before we close, I want you to do me a favor. Look into the camera right there and tell them viewers how they can find you, and how they can donate. Okay, everybody, how you doing? I'm AJ Frado. I'm the lead vocalist of AJ's Brave Hearts. It's a 501c3 charity rock band. We help, you know, it started with pit bulls. They're misunderstood, and so am I. But we help, you know, animals, all animals. We help um, children at Christmas time with Toys for Tots, Marine Corps Reserve. Uh, we help veterans with invisible injuries. And we help domestic violence and sexual assault workplace victims because there's not enough said about those things. And um, that's very important important for me to you know even if I don't have the money I can still advocate but you can help us at our PayPal uh, AJ's Bravehearts uh, INC at gmail.com and um, we we've made some good money over the years and with Monsters of Rock and I really appreciate Larry and my my family up there that has helped us earn money and over the years we've we've made over a hundred thousand dollars for the brave hearts to to give away but through pandemic we lost about everything Thing. And to the point where my wife has taken my debit card away. <laughs> so please help AJ's Brave Hearts. We got a lot to do to stay useful and productive. There you have it, folks. You heard it. Help out AJ's Brave Hearts. Man, he's done so many amazing things. I mean, we're talking about a, 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 a guy who saved lives, a guy who were, was with the Blue Angels, the guy who's out there working for free. He's out there donating his time to make the world a better place. You know the guy's hurting. You know he's done so many amazing things. Great singer, support him. Go on out there. And remember, as I always say, if your life was a movie, would you want to watch it? And if the answer is no, then stop being ordinary and start being extraordinary. This your boy Wham Bam. As always, stay positive and keep testing negative. Till next Wednesday. 
I salute you, AJ. Salute. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for all this you do. This is your boy Wham Bam, and I'm out. <laughs>